Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcast on agriculture and climate change. Declining yields due to warmer temperatures and less rain, biodiversity loss, increased risk of floods. The impacts of climate change on European agriculture are irrefutable. But what impact does agriculture have on climate change? And what role can it play in helping address this challenge? Stay with us. In December 2019, the European Parliament declared a climate and environmental emergency in Europe and across the globe and called on the European Commission, all member states and the major global institutions to take urgent and concrete action to limit global warming and biodiversity loss. The Parliament also urged the new Commission to address the inconsistencies of EU policy on the climate and environmental emergency through far-reaching reforms of EU policies, including agricultural policy. This appeal came just before the announcement of the European Green Deal, an ambitious strategy that aims to make Europe the world's first climate neutral continent by 2050. And one can talk climate change without talking agriculture, so let's have a look at that. Data analysis and predictions suggest that climate change will have a different impact on the different regions, with countries in southern Europe suffering greater impact from global warming than those in northern Europe. So, the Mediterranean region is likely to face declining yields due to more heat and less rain, which also increases the risk of droughts, wildfires and biodiversity loss. In contrast to this, in the Atlantic and Boreal regions, climate change will lead to more and stronger precipitation, more damaging winter storms and increased risk of flooding, and continental Europe is likely to become the New South. But the agricultural sector is not only affected by climate change, it also contributes significantly to it, mainly through the release of greenhouse gases such as methane from cows belching and stored animal manure and nitrous oxide from fertilisers. That's right. On average, the agriculture sector is responsible for around 10% of the EU's total greenhouse gas emissions. That's a significant share. So knowing this, how can agriculture policy making help address climate change? Stay with us. There are actually two ways to do this. Through actions involving the mitigation of greenhouse gas emissions and through adaptation responses. An example of a mitigation action could be the conversion of arable land into grassland in order to sequester carbon in the soil. Examples of adaptation include technological solutions, for instance, to allow for more efficient use of water or improvement of soil management and the diversification of production, for example, breeding more heat-tolerant livestock varieties. And because, even with mitigation efforts, the climate will continue to change in the years to come, mitigation and adaptation strategies should not be seen as an either-or, but a both-and. Indeed. And the EU's current common agricultural policy provides support for both sets of policy interventions. And several studies provide data on the operation and impact of the cap on climate change and greenhouse gas emissions. So what lessons can we learn? One of the conclusions of an evaluation undertaken for the Commission is that there are a range of cap measures that are only partially relevant to climate needs. As the cap is constrained by the lack of compulsory implementation and by the absence of mandatory measures targeted emissions from livestock farming. There are also no sector-specific mitigation targets for agriculture at the EU level and the current cap does not contain any legally binding or measurable objectives for climate adaptation. In relation to EU climate mitigation efforts, land management practices such as greening, payments for afforestation and agroforestry systems could offer high mitigation potential, as well as investments in new technologies and infrastructure. Though so far it has been difficult to find a link between land use changes associated with direct payments to farmers and reduced emissions. In relation to climate adaptation, a range of tools and investment lines are available to help member states adapt their agriculture and forest sectors to the effects of climate change, and here the link has been easier to prove. The Commission's evaluation study also found that good training and advice, as well as technical guidance, plays a key role in informing farmers about climate change and getting them to act. 
but it also identified a number of missed opportunities for adaptation and inconsistencies in the current policy mix. So what could change in the future? Well, aware of the central role that agriculture can play in achieving the EU's climate neutrality commitments, the EU's budget for the next seven years will allocate 40% of the cap to climate action, with all direct payments to farmers conditional on enhanced environmental and climate requirements. The European Parliament has consistently recognised the need to address climate change and has pushed for more ambitious climate targets. However, it remains to be seen how the lessons from the current cap will shape the design and implementation of the new cap strategic plans, especially given that the Commission's future proposals for them include giving greater discretion to member states. You're listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. 